All right, uh, let's start with an example here, um, kind of a standard, relatively simple example, um, computing Taylor polynomials. Um, and we'll hope that this example is, illustrates a couple of things. One, how the process works, how you come up with the Taylor polynomial, how you sort of identify patterns and then generalize, right? Um, degree n, right? If we wanted like degree 100, we're not going to calculate 100 derivatives. We want to figure out what's going on. Um, the other is, is sort of the reason that we care about Taylor polynomials, sort of, right? Um, and the point is that functions like the exponential function, uh, we, we tend not to think about this these days because we have calculators and computers that will give us the values of these functions, right? For any x value that we want, for any degree of accuracy that we want. Um, we just get it out of a machine, right? But, well, one, there's the question of how do the machines come up with those values, right? How are they programmed to compute these things? Uh, you know, and, and how did people figure this out before they had calculators and computers, right? Because people have been working with exponential functions for a very long time. Um, and, well, back in the day, instead of calculators, what people had were huge books full of tables of values um, telling them, you know, if you wanted to know the value of, of e at 1.6, you could find, you go through the book, you'd look it up on the table, and you would get the value, right? Um, this is what you had to do, right? And, and how did people make those books? How did they fill them out? How did they calculate them? Well, they didn't have calculators available, right? So they had to do computations that could be done by hand. Polynomial calculations can be done by hand, right? Um, we, you know, all, the, all this involved in, in, in computing polynomials is powers, products, and sums, right? Or differences, right? So it's, it's all basic, you know, to compute a polynomial, you need only basic arithmetic, right? And basic arithmetic, in principle, can be done by hand if you're patient enough, right? So you imagine that maybe, maybe you've learned all about the exponential function, you know what its derivatives are and things like that, you've, but somehow you've made it this far in your calculus career without actually ever learning the value of e. Well, let's see how you might come up with it. So, first we're going to try to compute the general degree n Maclaurin polynomial, right? And so remember, um, Maclaurin means that we're doing a Taylor polynomial uh, with this c value set to zero, right? So, f of x is e to the x, right? f prime of x is e to the x. f double prime of x is e to the x. And, well, okay, you get the idea, right? Nothing happens when you take derivatives of the exponential function, okay? So, f of 0 is 1. f prime of 0 is 1 f double prime of 0 is 1, right? In fact, all the derivatives of the exponential function are equal to 1 at 0, okay? So, our Maclaurin polynomial, Pn, we know that the definition looks like this. f of 0 plus f prime of 0 times x plus f double prime of 0 over 2 factorial times x squared. Uh, you know what, let's go to f triple prime for good measure. Why not? f triple prime at 0 over 3 factorial times x cubed, and so on, down to that last derivative over n factorial times x to the n. But now we know all these derivatives are just 1, so what we get is 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial plus x cubed over 3 factorial and so on down to x to the n over n factorial, right? Which is a fairly nice, simple pattern. Easy enough to follow, right? If you want you could use summation notation, right? 
and write this as x to the k over k factorial. Those of you who are looking at sequences in series, let n go to infinity here, and what you will have is actually a series representation for the exponential function, and what we're going to see is that's actually valid for all real numbers. Um, so replace that n by infinity, and this is e to the x, exactly equal to e to the x. But if you truncate, if you stop at some point, you only have an approximation of e to the x, right? So the idea is the more terms you add, the better the approximation gets, right? Um, and the closer you stay to zero, the better your approximation will be, okay? So how do we approximate e? Well, what is e? e is f of 1, okay? Now it says use p5, okay? So what, how is that going to work? So what that means is we want to say that e is f of 1, and, you know, the whole point of these Taylor polynomials is they're supposed to approximate the original function. So f of 1 should be approximately p5 of 1, right? And this approximation should, in theory, be better than the linear approximation. Okay, so what's p5 at 1? Well, we go up to degree 5, we set x equal to 1. So that's a 1, that's a 1, that's a 1, the next, so we have 1 plus a half plus 1 over 3 factorial plus 1 over 4 factorial plus 1 over 5 factorial. Um, if you want to work those out, you get up to there. Okay. And if you want to go a little bit further, get everything all over a common denominator. 120 plus 60 plus 20 plus 5 plus 1 over 120. Okay, so 180, 200, 206. Is that right? Probably did something wrong. Good chance I did something wrong. But, so we get, we get something like this, right? Um, yeah. Okay. Um, and then we say, okay, what is that approximately? Here's where I think this is wrong. I think I th that's less than 2, right? And, and what we should be getting here is 2 point, so the, the decimal value should be 2.71667, uh, something like that. Um, why I think I made a mistake. Um, ignore this part. I've done something wrong there. That part's fine. Um, okay, so we get this value, 2.7 something, um, which is pretty good. The calculator value, if you ask the calculator to give you e up to, up to four, four, four or five decimal places, what you're going to get is, and again, it's only approximate because it goes on forever, uh, but you get like 2.71. 818, I think, is how E starts, okay? Um, so, so this approximation is, is pretty good, right? First two decimal places are accurate. We're off by two in the third decimal place, and, and if we added more terms, well, our approximation would, would keep getting better and better. Oh, ha, I know what's wrong. I fixed it. What did I miss? One plus one. I'm not wrong. I just have to add in a term. So that's not 206. It's uh, 326 divided by 120. And yeah, that gives you that 2.7. OK. So as a means of approximation, it's pretty good. Uh, what we still have to do is we have to figure out whether we can get some idea of a quantifying this approximation. Do we know ahead of time, if we don't know that value, do I know whether or not that's a good approximation? We need some means of testing, right? That's going to come later.